Hello and welcome to my channel Haley Marie Vintage. Today I have an exciting spring project for you guys. I don't know if you can tell it's sunny here in Seattle finally which means spring is in the air and I'm really excited. Daffodils and crocuses have just come up and I want to have a dress in time for tulip season. So this is the fabric we'll be working with today. It is three and three eighths of a yard um, and it's this beautiful tulip fabric. It is directional so it goes like up and down. I think that will be okay, fingers crossed. I do have a couple of different patterns we're choosing from. So first up we have this guy here. I'm hoping and this is my ideal pattern that I'm going to be using it is Butterick 7714. And it is a halter dress variation. So I kind of really like the halter in this. I like the gathered top. I think it looks really interesting and I also really like the shape of this skirt. So I'm hoping to make it with this. However, this calls for three and three eighths. And that is a fabric without nap. And this fabric technically has nap since it is a directional. So I am not 100% sure this is gonna work. But if not, I do have a backup pattern. This is Butterick. 6130 it has this interesting kind of zigzaggy neckline that i think is really pretty and could be really pretty with this dress especially because it would pair really well with jewelry then and i think this fabric would look really nice with a lot of different jewelry so this is my backup because this one only requires two and seven eighths of fabric so i feel more optimistic that it'll work out i guess so that is the two patterns um, i will start by laying out this one and then go over to this one if this one doesn't work. So we're gonna hop into cutting where you will see which of these I end up using. I think Spooky has decided to make an appearance first though. Wow, that was a roar, come here. All right, Spooky has said hello. We are now going to actually drop into cutting my fabric now because she's gonna eat this plant so I need to move it back to where it belongs. So I will see you at the cutting part. Here I am cutting out this pattern. So directionally it ended up being actually kind of weird because the bodice is almost cut on the bias. So with that, I didn't have to worry about direction quite as much as I thought. And then otherwise everything like fit well enough. I am doing my preferred pattern and it does all fit. It's just that like there's definitely like some cuts into some seam lines and I do also have things cutting into the hem of the skirt because I do know that dresses tend to hang really really long on me. So with that knowledge I am cutting out things that go into the hemline because usually I do have to cut three or four inches off a hem to where it sits on my body. So I think this all worked out just fine and by I think I mean I know because uh, this is future Haley speaking so I'm very excited that this worked out because I really did want to do this pattern with this fabric good morning I have some bubble tea this morning and I'm excited about it oh so I just basically cut my fabric yesterday it only took me about a half hour and then I spent the rest of my day like really organizing my house and getting all my meals ready for today so I could sew. And then I went to bed early to try to feel very energetic and ready to get up in the morning. But somebody at 2 a.m., there are a bunch of like college student teenagers, I don't know, running around outside of my apartment like yelling, chug, 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 drink, drink, drink. And I'm like, I don't live near a university. I live in a very quiet old people neighborhood, so I'm very baffled by how these kids decided to do this here. Very much not a fan, made me very cranky, and then I slept longer than planned as a result because it took me a while to get back to sleep because they were out there being rowdy for quite a while. It's fine. Um, I, I, I like, I, I was so mad. I like debated like yelling at them, but I refused to already start yelling at kids so uh, I feel too young for that. That is kind of where I'm at uh, looking at I've read the instructions for this project three or four times the way through. It seems really straightforward but the construction of this dress is really really interesting and I'm really excited to do it because I think I don't know I've just I've never seen a dress that you construct like this and I think it's really neat. I don't really have anything else to say so let's go ahead and dive into finishing this garment. I do think I'm gonna be able to do the whole thing today because it seems pretty straightforward, but that feels like famous last words, so we'll see. So usually I start with the bodice, but today I'm starting with the skirt. A, it's what the pattern tells me to do, but also the skirt is super straightforward and I just wanted to get it done and out of the way so I could focus on the bodice, which was a little bit more new to me. So here I am starting to pin all the different pieces of the skirt together. 
And then here I am now sewing all of those pattern pieces together. I'm quite pleased. Like I said, I did cut into the seam allowance on some of these, but I knew I was cutting into less than five eighths, so I was totally fine there. And I was just basically sewing this up. As always, Spooky is around and checking things out. She has become very frisky around the sewing machine. So here I am focused on putting in the darts. These were pretty easy and there weren't that many in this pattern, just in the back because the front is more of a draped front. And then I did sew up the front of the pattern as well as the back. The back is basting so I can put in the zipper there later. And then I am just aligning side seams to sew those up. And then here I am sewing up the facings, the raw edges. I'm just folding them over by a quarter inch so they'll be nice and pretty on the inside. And then I am pinning these facings to the dress. These were really interesting because you left the top edge of the bodice raw, which totally makes sense, but it was still interesting nonetheless. Otherwise you were sewing basically like the full strap. And then here I am turning that facing inside out. This wasn't too bad because it was thick enough. And then one of the techniques you are seeing me here do here when I am turning inside out the facing is I am actually kind of like putting the, well, I'm using my tool, but I'm also putting the facing on the ironing board and just kind of rolling it around till I can see those stitchings up at the top. And then I am ironing these so they are nice and neat. And then here I am stitching the facings down so they don't do anything wacky, like roll out the armpit. That happens to me if I don't sew these down sometimes. And then here I have gathered the top of the bodice to the place where it sits on the neck using the notches. And then it has you cover it with bias tape to make sure it has a really nice finish instead of having edges. And then you are going ahead and you are folding this in so that way then the bias tape is on the inside against your neck and you don't see kind of like the awkwardness of the seam joining of the gathers to the like neck strap thing. And then finally we're doing one of my favorite parts which is gathering down the skirt to fit the bodice. I really love this cut. I always really like a flat front and then gathers on the side and back. I think it's very cute on me. And then I thought I'd show you the process of how I figure out how long my back zip needs to be since it's not what's in the pattern. So I measure the back seam that I have with a measuring tape to figure out exactly how much that takes. And then I go over to what I call my zipper drawer, which is a very fun place. And this is where I hoard all of my metal vintage zippers. I have them all tied in bundles of the same size as zippers. So I dig through until I find the size of the zipper I'm looking for and then usually the size that is like two inches longer just in case I don't get a color range I want. And then after I pick out that zipper I am just sewing it in before this. I have pressed it, I have cut apart the seam, and I have basted in the zipper and now I am just making those basting stitches permanent using my zipper foot and my sewing machine and I'm just starting at the top and then going down around the bottom and then back up to the top. I find that this is what gives me the least bubbly type of zipper. And then here I am using a new hemming method that the pattern calls for because it is a slight circle. They are actually having you put gathering stitches on the edges of the skirt like the very ends and then gathering that so it fits really nicely and then eventually which I don't do this on camera they are having you do a hem tape on the top of that and then you are eventually like using a hem stitch to actually secure it to the skirt this is hands down the cleanest finish I have ever had on a skirt like this so I'll be using this method in the future it worked out really really well for me and then here the garment is actually done I'm just trying to show you a step that I usually don't show you guys off camera and that is me pulling out all of the gathering stitches and fixing any loose threads or basting stitches that were there but shouldn't be there anymore. This is a huge part of the garment making process because so many stitches you make are not actually for the final garment. I just feel like people don't show this part because it's not really very exciting or flashy but it is what makes like a garment really special looking after is a lot of like homemade garments sometimes even skip this step and it just looks so much nicer and more professional if you go back and do this step and it is well worth it. It is a step I do on every single one of my pieces. And with those last tidying steps done, I will now show you the reveal. I absolutely adore this dress and can't wait for you to see it.
So you have seen the reveal on this one. I am so pleased with this dress and it really only took me about five hours, I think, or six hours to sew with all the handwork and the cutting and everything. So I think that's pretty good and I'm pretty pleased with that. And I absolutely adore this fabric, I guess, like the pattern of the fabric. And I also adore the pattern itself, the sewing pattern. Um, I think this turned out really cute. It's pretty low in the back. Uh, which is not my favorite so this is gonna have to be like a pasties type of dress like there's just no way to wear a bra with this so that's like my biggest criticism but like i should have guessed that looking at the pattern going in otherwise everything's pretty straightforward i don't think i would actually change anything about this dress i absolutely feel like i did a really great job the biggest thing i guess to note that i did for the first time was this type of hemming where you put in the gathering line and pulled it and I think this has given me the cleanest hem I've ever gotten from a rounded edge like that. So I'm definitely going to be using that method of hemming in the future whenever I make an item like this. I also really love, as you know, the flat front with the gathers on the sides. I just think it's so flattering and nice on me. And I wasn't sure how this would turn out because this pattern did not suggest using cotton, so I was a bit of a risk. And then I also like, I feel like the zipper matches really well in here. I like, feel like this work just worked out. And I think that is a testament to all the skills of sewing. And I am not going to lie. It was so nice to do a project that was easy for the first time in a while. All of my projects that I've done recently have been really big stretches for me. And it was really nice to work with a fabric and a pattern that I felt really confident about completing, even though it was still new. This was like some nice relaxing sewing after I've been kind of putting myself through a little bit of a sewing boot camp. So I'm, I'm really happy with how it turned out. But that I guess ends this video. So if you wanna support my channel, I do actually have a Ko-Fi now where you can go over and buy me a coffee. Of course, there's no obligation. I'm just trying to earn a little bit of extra money because I spend a lot of time and love on this channel. But other than that, you can of course support me the usual and free ways by liking this video, commenting down below, and subscribing. I would love to have you stick around and I will see you next time. Bye.